Hey everyone, just a behind the scenes video. I don't know if this is gonna be Patreon only or just for everyone on the side channel, secondary channel, but I wanted to do a quick update on the server. We haven't really talked about it much since Wendell installed it with me and he did an amazing job, which is why I haven't really talked about it much because typically my experience with servers when I do them is that they require somewhat regular maintenance. That's because I do a good enough job and then there's a lot of things where you're like, I don't have time for this, I'll deal with it later. But Wendell, obviously knows exactly what he's doing. He doesn't have to look things up like I often do for this stuff. And so he set up perfectly. We've barely touched it in terms of maintenance, but I do have a few things I want to do. So number one is I did buy some RAM and this is warm. It should not be on top of that. This is, uh, I think this is 32 gigabytes. Yeah, so we've got two sticks of 32 gigabyte memory total. So it's, it's, uh, it's Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, never mind. Okay. I forgot what I bought. I bought it like a month ago. So we have two sticks in there now of 16 gigabytes. And then we've got two more slots where we can go up to uh, 32, I believe, if I remember correctly. Either way, though, the goal was to double the memory capacity. I don't remember what, exactly what I have in there. So this is the next project. It'll double memory capacity we have now. I've noticed looking at the, the admin console for uh, Unraid that we have set up on here. It's Unraid with ZFS. You should watch the video with, with Wendell if you haven't seen it or if you're interested in that stuff. But looking at that console, I've noticed that the memory does run quite low when a lot of people are accessing it and it hasn't really caused any noticeable performance problems for us. But I would like to, at some point, start running a VM on there, actively compressing things within the box. This is the, the server box. We've got a Navi GPU in it and uh, it'll work great for x265 compression but in order to do that i am going to need some more memory for the vm to be running constantly so that's what this upgrades for downside i can't replace it right now because there's everybody is using this thing so i can't really do like in flight swapping of ram we're not that sophisticated and we never really ever, will ever need to be because we're not um we're not some kind of server environment obviously so i just wait till everyone goes home and i can swap it out easy enough Downside is um, the way the memory is set up. I do need to get another cooler in here, another mini, a small form factor cooler, because the one that's in there right now is just sized wrong enough where one slot is unusable. So I need to work with maybe Silverstone or someone. Cryrig doesn't have anything that works for us. I need to work with someone to find something small enough. I know Paul, was it Paul? Paul worked on a, an SFF build recently too, and I don't think he used this case. I think he used a different one, but he had a similar problem of having difficulty finding a cooler that didn't conflict with the first RAM slot, but was also sufficient for what he wanted to do. So that's something we need to figure out. Uh, I've got a laptop on here right now, this EVGA laptop. I am, for the moment, permanently leaving this here because we had a lot of issues with AT&T recently and uh, I needed something close by so I could just do troubleshooting of all this stuff to see, okay, is it down in the unit or is it down just period? Like, is it my fault that the internet's down or AT&T's? And uh, spoiler alert, not my fault. So that's why that's there now. This thing's been running really well. Dust hasn't been much of a concern. I've wiped this off maybe once and it doesn't build up a whole lot. And part of that's because the way we set it up uh, where it's everything's exhaust. So it's a negative pressure setup. It's just pulling air in wherever it can, which primarily is going to be the front. And fortunately it's, that's pretty heavily filtered. So I just wiped a bunch of this off, but you can see what's where I didn't wipe is uh, right there. And that's still got very little dust on it. So I'm happy with the case. It's uh, it's great size. Unfortunately, it's a bit expensive. So I, I don't think a lot of people actually will buy one of these. But uh, if I remember correctly, it was like three, 400 bucks. It's an awful lot to pay for a case. Pretty cool though. This thing's been great. Uh, it does produce a lot of heat, even when it's not really in use, just passively, it's a lot of heat but we're still running 12 drives total on this. And then we're still running, I believe it is four drives total in this one. And I need to expand that at some point. So that's the server update. In terms of space, this is kind of interesting for you as well. We are currently at 30 terabytes free. We installed 50 total terabytes. And as a reminder, we do things quite a bit differently from a, a couple of the other YouTube channels where my policy has always been only keep what we realistically need and then a little bit more, but not everything. So, for example, we use the phrases A-roll and B-roll to mean a few things. For A-roll, whenever we say that word, what we mean is 
this kind of shot where it's me talking to camera or someone else talking to camera. We don't need that forever. Once the video is rendered, whatever a roll is in that video uncovered, that's obviously the only thing we wanted to keep to begin with. So we delete the source file and we just keep the final render in full quality forever. And then B-roll, we keep for a while, but we eventually compress it down so that we can store more. And when I say compress, what I really mean is transcode uh, to a smaller, mostly same quality file that once uploaded to YouTube all looks the same anyway. So I haven't run any A-roll deletion yet. We have a script for that. It crawls through. We have a, a identical folder naming structure every time. So we can run a script that looks through folders named A-roll and delete all the A-roll based on a certain age. We have a similar script for video transcoding. I haven't run those since we built this because we haven't been out of space. So the original, we had about 14 terabytes used. And on this one, we have 30 terabytes free. That puts us about 20 used. And uh, I'm actually, I'm just going to leave it alone for a while until it's more, more filled up. And I'll run the A-roll deletion and we'll be able to show a before and after of uh, super satisfying, like 30 terabytes freed up at once. For the B-roll stuff, that's what I need the, um, I need the transcode, the VM in. So once I get this installed, I get the VM going constantly, running transcodes daily. And we have months of backlog now of videos, B-roll, that can be transcoded down and compressed and made much smaller. And then what it'll do is it'll crawl through and delete all the source files. That'll free up a massive amount of space, but I need to do it before we're too low because the way Wendell set this up is to uh, not completely remove anything until like a 14 day period has passed to make sure there's nothing that we want to pull back. So I'll need to run it ahead of that. Then finally, this thing down here, the original server, the Synology box, uh, my bike's in the way, sorry, but my uh, the Synology box has not been in use. I left it there in case we needed anything off of it or in case this went down and we had trouble, but it's proven to be reliable. So this thing, at this point I can clear it. All the data has been off of it for a while now. Actually, I probably, I won't clear it really, but what's going to happen is it's got two more drives open. So I'm going to install two more drives here, same capacity, whatever's in there now. It was about a 14 terabyte open unit with the RAID 5 setup. So it's 20 terabytes, I think of disks maybe, and then 14 usable. And I'm going to bring that home and I have gigabit at home and I have fast enough internet here. So what I'm going to do is I'll do a local transfer here of cloning this to that after I delete the A roll and uh, compress down the B roll. So we'll do a, a clone here to there and then I'll bring that box home with the new drives in it and the compressed files. And I'll set up a remote cron job backup type thing where it'll pull from the office to the house and just back up only the video files, all the video files. Uh, honestly, we don't even really need to save the B-roll remotely. I'd probably save maybe a, a year or two of B-roll remotely, and then the rest is all finished files, unless I expand the storage a lot. So that's the idea for this one. It'll be remote backup. And then we've got another remote backup already. That's with an internet service. I'm not gonna say who it is uh, for security reasons, but we have another service that does our backups to their disks at their data center. So we're already covered there, but this will give me one that is local. It's not in the same building. So when you do backups, as I'm sure anyone who's in this type of work would know better than I do, but when you do backups, you want, first of all, RAID's not a backup, but it helps. Uh, you, you might want a RAID with some redundancy, for some redundancy. And then you want a completely offsite backup, and that's going to be like, for catastrophic reasons, uh, building floods, building burns down, stuff like that. You want all that data offsite. So we have one of those with a service. And then for me, I also want one that's offsite, but close. So let's say something does go wrong with this. I'll give you a realistic scenario. Rather than burning down or flood or something that's fairly, hopefully unrealistic, more likely what happens is someday we come in and it's just not working. Power supply died, whatever. So having something at my house means I can just, I drive over there, grab it, bring it in before any of the team gets here and we would be up and running for the day and it'd be completely seamless and fine. So that's why I want one that's semi-local and uh, it would buy us time to get this thing back up. So pretty cool system. I'm really happy with it. Uh, if you're an expert in this field, obviously I'm happy to hear about solutions that you've done in the past that you think we might find interesting. I'm not an expert in server stuff, but I know enough to obviously to protect ourselves from stupid things like data loss. 
Um, but there's more elegant things or, or just more fun things to do too. So let me know what you think. That's the update on our server stuff though. I think that's probably about all I have to tell you on that. We'll have more videos, of course, on this channel coming up. So we've got some that are for uh, Patreon subscribers only, and you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to get access to those. And Patrick's hosted a few of those lately. And then there's some, obviously, we're pushing public too. So make sure you subscribe to this one to catch all that. We'll have more of that as we go on and more of the Patreon stuff only too. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.